Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is Mark Baptiste, an ace photographer whose works have been featured in many advertising campaigns, such as Nike, Remy Martin, and L'Oreal, and magazines including Elle, Vanity Fair, Essence, among others. Welcome to the morning show, Mark. Well, thank you for having me. Thank Good you. to see you. Good morning, thank Mark. You. Thank yes. you very much. It's so nice to have you here in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving Lagos. I'm loving it. You're um, loving Lagos. I'm loving Lagos. We'll ask you later what you're doing in Lagos. But first of all, you're American and you're Haitian as well. Yes, correct? Haitian born, grew up in America. Yeah. I will, I'd like to discuss your photography later on, but this is so important to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, Haiti's been in the news um, lately. I, I think October 6th yeah, was the work. last... Earthquake, earthquake, right? Yeah. And you guys are really suffering. Earlier well, this year, uh, Donald Trump uh, classified uh, <laughs> or referred to um, um, countries like Haiti as shithole countries, yeah. correct? What, what do you make Nigeria. of that? <laughs> is that it's apparently, I mean, he's a, he's a, news, uh, he's a newsman, he's a, a, a talk show host, and he's, he's, show. Still, <laughs> he's still taking his in the apprentice, and I will welcome him to come to Africa, I'll go to Haiti to see. Um, I think it's in. I think it's unnecessary, calling another group of people shit How does and, that make you feel? Uh, I was deeply hurt. I was deeply hurt by his by his approach, and I think he's looking for the news factor. You know what I mean? That he doesn't care about people's feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he was like that all his life. In you know, in the 70s, he was bidding a uh, housing project. Uh, again, black people cannot rent his apartment. Um, so he's. To me, he's a racist, really? point blank. Well, you are from Haiti. Originally, you are also American. Yes. How much inspiration do you draw, you know, from Haiti? Uh, Haiti is, is, is that my it's like part of me. It's my backbone. Um, the colors, the people, the, the integrity that they possess and the resiliency when they go throughout their day is incredible to me. To me, I draw a lot of my inspiration for traveling to Haiti. No, I mean in terms of your background. Oh, I mean, my background is part of me. I mean, I cannot shake it off. I mean, I was born there, and I grew up in a Haitian household, you know, going to American school, um, but we still get that grounded, uh, the foundation. I'm Haitian 100%. Well, I've seen uh, quite a number of your photos, uh, <laughs> of your photographs, um, you know, checking through the books you published 2001, 2003, yeah, yes, three. 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, there seems to be in your photography an obsession with the female form. How, how, what is responsible <laughs> for that? Uh, to me, it's to celebrate the women form. I mean, I have three books with Zoli, like you're absolutely right. Uh, I enjoy what I do. Uh, I think to me, to empower women, to make sure women in beautiful light. What, what, what's there to hate? I mean, the, the women form is to be celebrated not to be, you know, um, um, you know, degrading or anything like that. If you look at my work, I'm all about, you know, embellish and beauty of the women form. But there seems to be, you know, a special focus on eth obsession. ethnic, et oh. well, no, I'm using special <laughs> focus like now, on obsession. ethnic women and then on nudity. Yeah. I mean, how do you cope with all of that nudity <laughs> in various shapes? Do you see nudity as art or you yes. know, something else? Um, uh, to me, my work reflects who I am. I mean, you know, it's, it's part of me, and photography is my life. Uh, whether I'm shooting a, a fashion assignment or nude is my preference because with Zoli is the publisher, like I said, uh, is to really, really embellish it and show it. That's the reason I have three books out, um, to show the beauty of the women form. Well, if I had seen as many nude women as you, I probably would have gone blind. Ah, <laughs> maybe <least> to, <laughs> <laughs> to see properly. Uh, you know. No, I mean, to, to me, to me, it's work. You know, I'm, I work really hard with the lighting, with the composition, to really, you know, if I change your body image of one woman, I did the job right. You know, I mean, and, and, and beautiful is to celebrate ethnic women in all shapes and sizes. Um, I got letters from women all over the world, or, or from jails, I say, thank you, I mean, you know, we're not perfect. All right, so, so how has the Me Too movement affected your work now? I mean, if you're photographing nude women, I mean, wh how, how would you say that, there's, is there a change how now? How do you stay within we, boundaries? Within boundaries? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, to me, I, I try to protect myself any way I can. I'm never by myself. I always got my assistant or the stylist or makeup. Even though it's, it's respect also, you know, it, I know it's a movement, you know, people going to say things, whether it's true or not, 
Look what happened to, you know, uh, the Supreme Court judge. He's still sitting. To me, I focus on the work. You know, I make my subject feel very comfortable. Um, we have communicating before what we're doing, how we're going to shoot it. There's no surprises. And there's a release that I signed before I even oh, so pick up the camera. Okay, always, good. always. I don't pick up my camera before I sign the release. I have to protect myself. I have to protect them, too. You know what I mean? Um, those little... In the windows, I'm not part of that. Well, how do you see photography? Do you see it as an art or as a lifestyle thing, a hobby? You know, particularly now that anybody can be a photographer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even I, I take photos every day <laughs> with my phone and, you know, I post it. <laughs> Good luck it. with that. <laughs> so what, what's the difference between <laughs> us? You know? There's a big difference. I go to school for it. I studied for years. Okay. I've been shooting for over 26 years. So it's not a hobby. Uh, uh, I started ninth grade. I was like kind of 16 years old. I've been shooting ever since. That's the only thing I know. Like I say, photography is like, yeah, I'm breathing right now. Mm -hmm. Photography is my life. So, yes, technology do change because you got your iPhone. Um, everybody could call themselves photography, but the, um, the proof is in the pudding. You know what I mean? It's, it's the type of work you put out. Yes, you might get lucky, get a great shot in your iPhone, boom, okay. But that doesn't make you a photographer. But you have photographed so many high-profiled um, people, including celebrities, and Barack Obama. Tell yeah. us your experience in the White House. Oh, man, it was, it was almost like a dream come true. I was in the Oval Office. I had to pinch myself. I mean, <clears throat> they go out of their way to make you feel Michelle and, and Barack, and Mr. Barack Obama, they, they make me feel real comfortable. Um, they invite me to the Oval Office. I start shooting there before I go to the Yellow Room. Um, shake your hand. It's very... It's bigger than you thought. I really? mean, the dog guy is tall. Oh, he's tall. And it's really okay. funny. And then Michelle is just as tall as him. I mean, they're like a beautiful human beings. And, and that truly one of the highlights in my career. Really? How was the protocol going in through the White House and all of that? The security is like, it's like Fort Knox plus. Really? Uh, We've got to go to five different security changes. They put you in this... Uh, it's, it's really. Oh, this kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you. They've been watching. They're watching you the moment you walked in. Really. You won't even. The, your body been, language. They might have been investigating you before you even. Came oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> no, oh, yeah. This is oh, this is the leader of the world, man. Yeah. It's like they don't. They take it very seriously. Uh -huh. You know, they run background check. They run. You know, every they turn every stone. You go to visit them. I mean, I was like, oh, wow. This is this is big. This is big. Who has influenced you the most? In terms of what you do, uh, there's a lot of few photographers that that influence me. Is my family and music. Uh, I'm a true believer in music and old film. But the guy that I look up to, uh, Emmett Newton, um, Greg uh, Luxenford, uh, Avedon, uh, Irvin Penn, which is the legendary in their own right. I mean, they sustain time, and you know their work still live on today. You know, even though they no longer, some of no longer with us, but the work that they do is like amazing. Okay, when you carry the camera, mm -hmm. what do you look out for? I mean, when I was uh, a media advisor, I used to tell the photographers in my team mm -hmm. that the the photo is taken here. Yeah. You know, I tell them take the photo here. It's not the uh, machine, but when you carry the uh, camera, what do you look out for? Uh, first of all, I never live nowhere without my camera. <laughs> my yeah. camera is somewhere on the side here. Right here in your <laughs> <pocket>. <laughs> So, um, like I said, again, yes, come, I do a lot of research before any photo shoot. Uh, I, I know them, uh, a lot about my subjects, what they like and how they photograph before, how do I improve. So a constant learning experience. You know, that's why the camera is only the tool, but the mind is what takes the picture. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it memorable. To me, I'm after that, the, the essence of the person and, you know, to capture that and because if they look good, I look good. And, uh, and I, love, I love photography, and I love to capture those moments, those rare moments, especially. So is there a difference when you take a photo of, like, a celebrity as opposed to a model or a politician? Is, is there a difference in, in Yes. Your I mean, it, it, there, there is a difference okay. between a, a politician or a model or a regular person as a subject. Because um, politician, you got very little short time to capture what you need, okay. the image. Uh, usually, like Barack Obama, it took me uh, seven minutes to shoot all those pictures. Seven minutes? Seven minutes. Wow. Yeah, usually give five. Michelle Obama, who did, who did the session in less than ten minutes, because mm -hmm. they're busy, you know what I mean? Um, a musician is a different approach. Okay. 
um, because they have the personal style, they have the team, you got to work with the, the stylist, the, the management team, the PR people. So there's very, you know, very, a, a lot of communication, so to speak, mm -hmm. to get the team on board because sometimes you don't meet the artists until the day of the shoot. So you talk to the publicists, to the management team. Sometimes they make it a little bit difficult than, than they need to be. Mm. Once you finally meet the artist, everything is fine, everything is cool. Would it be easier to shoot a model as opposed model, to a oh, model? Model, that's the job. You know, a model is the job to, um, to, to, to show the clothes, to show beauty, to show whatever the storyline is. You know, make it all work a lot easier because, you know, you could direct them exactly what you want. You know, you could direct the politician to too. Yeah, yeah. You could direct the politician too, but it's a little bit, very little leeway. But the model, you got the leeway because they know the story, they know what they're here for, and that's their job. And make my work a lot easier, and, 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 and just I got to give them the direction, and then we, we, we keep it going. What's the most difficult part of photography? Oh, my God. The, to me, shooting, the shooting part is the easiest part because you did all the homework, all the all, all, all the preparation is already done. You just go and execute. The hardest part is the editing. Mm. To get the picture after you shot 500 frames or 200 frames, to get the picture that captured the moment, that captured it. Sometimes you have to be focused when you're editing because you might pick the wrong picture, might, but you have the picture within the, 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 the files, but you just got to find the right picture. To me, it's the right your picture. Favorite equipment? I mean, you must have used all kinds of lens. You must have used all kinds of cameras, but based on your experience, which would you say is your favorite equipment? Uh, there's, there's a go-to camera that I always go to, and, which is a Canon Mark II or Mark III that you know, I use quite a lot. Um, back in the days, I used to shoot a lot with Hasselblad, uh, 8 by 10 cameras, which is analog, which is nowadays it's like mostly digital. Because when you shoot analog, you still got to scan the negatives to get the digital file. So you have to work with the digital file. So, so I go straight to the main source, which is just digital file. Um, I don't have a, I do have a perfect lens, but it's, it's whatever it takes to do the job right. You know, that the 70 to 200 millimeter, there's a 24 to 100 that I usually I use a lot um, because it gives you close reaction to the subject. You know, I know you're not so far away, but you get a, a rapport or communication with your subject. To me, it's all about communication. So if the short lens make me more approachable, then that's what I use. Well, how exact is photography now in the age of technology? I mean, the traditional view is that if you take a photo, you know, you just sit down there and the photograph will just give an exact, you know, uh, rendition. But these days with technology, with even filter, I mean, I rely on filter. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> when you taught me how to use a filter. You know, so what you see these days in photographs, it may not be what is the reality. That's a, that's so how, how should, I mean, how, then why should we continue to rely on photography? Yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question because um, photography, like I said, beauty is also the eye of the beholder. Um, once you capture that moment, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? Whether, whether you use a, a, a point and shoot camera, whether you use uh, a Hasselblad or, or, or Canon or Nikon, whatever your preference, even an iPhone, you know, because technology is moving ahead. I mean, you can't deny it. Technology is getting better and better. Like Instagram is not going to go anywhere, you know, because they could only get better. Um, the future of photography, it's, it's changing. Technology do change uh, our game a lot um, because it's faster. It's like riding the 747 or instead of the, the Concorde. You know what I mean? You get there faster and more efficient. Um, you know, I could snap a picture right now and I could make, make it global in an instant. In an instant. And so that's the power of, of technology. And we should not shy away from it. We should embrace it, learn more about it, trying to stay ahead of the game, um, and learn as much as you can. Because, yes, the phone's getting smaller and smaller, but the idea is still the same. The human touch, that's what right, missing in technology. You know, it's become too perfect. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need that little imperfection to create beauty, you know, to capture the, the, the moment, you know. And 
it's, it, is, it is what it's going to be. It is. It's going to be moving ahead. I have to stay on top of my game and learn as much that I can about the newest technology that's coming in as far as image making and taking the picture with a digital camera or iPhone. Because I'm sure the iPhone 12 is going to be even more advanced than the XS. Yeah. You know, the and footage you, you will probably have competition <laughs> from people like us. That's always, that's always competition. <laughs> I welcome the competition. I mean, that makes me better. Yeah. So I push myself harder to beat you up. <laughs> Yeah, I see you, you prefer portraits. You do mainly portraits. Um, you don't do la landscape photography at all. Why? Um, landscape, landscape doesn't really... I'm, I'm all about the people. Okay. You know, I, I do do some landscape, but I don't show it. But mostly fashion, portrait, a lot of music artists. Uh, lately, I'm doing a lot of politicians as well. Um, they, they, look after me and they, they look for me and because the way I push or shoot... It doesn't feel like a photo shoot per se because I bring my sensitivity, my humor, you know, my experience to the shoot. So they know they're in good hands. They know if they don't look good, I don't look good. So I make sure they're comfortable with what I bring in and uh, to capture in, in the best light I possibly can. When I look at the list of jobs you've done, you know, L, Essence, you know, all these big, big, you know, uh, persons, I looked at it and then you've done three books, you know, within a space of about six years, I said, this guy must be rich. I'll reach out. He must have a lot of money. I'm very rich in spirit. <laughs> no, I mean, cash-wise. Uh, cash yeah, he's going to ask you how much you make per shoot. Oh, like, my God. Like, he's about to ask you that. No, you see, each, each shoot is different. Uh, we shoot editorial, there's a special rate for that. When you shoot advertising, there's a big rate for that. When you do a movie process, the rates change. It well, fluctuates. Well, what's your biggest um, job? Like, what would you rate, like, as opposed to the shooting? The one that really yes, brought that in the uh, lorry loads of cash. Is it, oh. is it a Heineken or, like, what? Uh, an ad? The, the, it's an ad. It was for Chris, who was Shakira. That Ooh. job. Oh, the, that the jo musician? The musician okay, Shakira. Okay, okay. So, Chris, Shakira was, like, let's say I couldn't carry in one hand. <laughs> like how much? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. He's not kidding. He's going to It's a lie. You don't it's, have it, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's a because each job is different. Yeah. Each rate is different. I mean, if you feel the, the L, the editorial rate is slightly different than advertising. And, uh, but you have a standard rate. Like, no one could book you except they could pay, like, this yeah, amount to, of Yeah, you have to yeah have there's, a, there's a minimum I'll, I'll take. Right. Because it's part of the integrity. You pay your dues, so therefore you have to be paid for your... For your work. Is it Correct. this way with other photographers, or you just have to, you know, earn your stripe like models? Or? Yeah, you gotta earn. You gotta earn. You got. You gotta have a body of work. You cannot just come out of the gate and demand half a million dollars for a photo shoot. You know what I mean? So you have to. Uh, they have to know your body of work. Like you said, you just said you got three books. You got all this uh, magazine, Essence, uh, L, all that. You know, shoot for Reebok, Nike. Yes. There's a president, you know, but the rates, you know, they, they contact you because they know they can, you know, you're not going to be cheap, but you'll work with, we'll work with certain budget. So, what are you doing in Nigeria? <laughs> oh, man, I'm, work, I'm in Nigeria right now, Lagos. I'm working on a, on a special project for this day, a style for Mr. Nduka. Okay. You know, I can't talk much about it because the project is, is still... You know, developing is still in the work, it's still forming, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't want to give it all away. It's not my first time in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Nigeria not, not, not too long ago um, for, for OG, for another project that we're working on. Okay. Uh, also very secretive. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know nothing about it, but I'll let you know later. Let me ask you, I mean, your, your country, your original country, it mm -hmm. has been, uh, yes. you know, in trouble. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm use that phrase. Since yeah. the French decided to sabotage yes. and punish, force uh, Haiti to pay, uh, if you like, oh, ra ransom and all that. But here you are. You are in the uh, United States, enjoying making $500,000 per shoot. Do you have anything you're doing back home, like giving back to oh, yeah, yeah. I was just going to oh, ask yes, you, yes, your yes, job yes. with the Artists for Peace yeah, project as um, well. Yeah, APJ. Yeah. I work, uh, yes. Um, Haiti, like I said, is close to my heart. Anything I can do to, 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 to help ameliorate the problem, 
I do. Um, every time there's an earthquake or, 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 or hurricane, we try to help as much as I can. Um, I'm working with uh, NOAA New York, which is an organization on the Northeast who provide uh, basic care. Um, every year we go on a mission to, to see over 3,000 patients. Um, also working with uh, Artists Peace and Justice, which is Sina Institute. We've got a school up in Jacques Mel near Capic, where we take 39 to 40 students every year. We train them about sound, editing, retouching, uh, um, and also have a sound stage that we teach them about uh, sound engineer. So we show them, give them the tool, they learn it, and then they go out there to getting a job on their own because it's better to teach them how to take care of themselves than hand them out on a, on a couple hundred dollars that goes, doesn't last long. <clears throat> I'm a deep believer about teaching a man how to fish and fit himself for the rest of his life. Uh, I don't mind sharing what I, my, my career or le what I learned throughout my career with uh, the new generation because they are the future and, you know, Haiti can catch a break. So every chance I get to go down there and to speak or to, to help a hand or whether it's a major commission, whether it's a school system, uh, the school uh, in, in Jacques Mel, uh, I'm, I'm doing the best I can and, and, and do some talks and go on radio and encourage the youth to get an education and, you know, they say, well, why do we get an education because there's no job? But you never know if you don't do it. When was the last time you were in Haiti? I was in Haiti in September. In September. I was in September. I go pretty often. Uh, September I went to, um, and then as soon as I came back, there's the earthquake in October 6. Walk us through that experience, the first time you went back uh, after the, that first major earthquake. Oh, Wow, that's, it was really something else. On, on January 10th, January 12, 2010, we got hit by a 7.8 earthquake in Leogan. I think we, there's about 200 to 300 casualties, death. Um, but the press didn't, you know, the press didn't they didn't prove, they proved the right numbers. Of course, they do that because of AIDS and stuff like that. Um, the how, how many did you say? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Wow. Like because in well, Leogan, in Leogan alone, what's the population alone, of Haiti? Right. Eight million total. Okay. And, and Porto, because the majority of the population live in in the capital, and, and you know, it's really concentrated. Mm -hmm. So when that earthquake hit, it really hurt them pretty bad. Um, so a week after the earthquake in 2010, I I went with like you know 15 container like bags and of all kind of thing you could think of from medicine to to um, uh, anything you could think of like medicine toothpaste uh, clothing people keep sending me stuff to take down to Haiti at the point I could I had to say I can't carry anymore because I'm the only one and I wasn't there was no flight to Port-au-Prince I have to go to the DR Dominican Republic and then ride 10 hour bus ride to oh. end up in Port-au-Prince and um, to go see firsthand how devastating it was really it was really devastating. Well we have to let you go shortly, but before you go, each time you come to Nigeria, how do you feel? Uh, to me, Haiti, I mean that Nigeria reminds me a lot of Haiti. Really? <laughs> yeah, the energy, the hustle bustle, the you know, the energy of the people, you know, the the, the driving, the traffic. You know, it's so, so much like it's it was like the, not too far cousins. You know? <laughs> and the food, <laughs> and the, food is, the food is different. Okay. That's the only thing different about the, is the food, uh, but there's similarities in a lot of ways. Um, but Lagos and Port-au-Prince, if I show a picture of Port-au-Prince and picture of Lagos. I think you might, you might like, hmm, take twice to decide which one is Port-au-Prince and which one is Lagos. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think, you know, there, there's even, even more between Haiti and Nigeria. I once met a group of Asians mm -hmm. at an international conference, mm -hmm. you know, and they thought I was one of them. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, can yeah, tell you yeah. no, I'm from like Nigeria. Said, we are <laughs> cousins. You are one of us. I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> they same Because the slave right. trade start not yes. too far from here. Yes. It's all West Africa, so or whatever we like, distant cousin or... We are the, you know, we, our ancestors are from here. So after Africa, Haiti is, a, you know, Haiti, when you land in Haiti, it's almost like you, you're in Africa. Thank you And so much. that's what I love about it, the energy of the people, the, the resiliency of, of, of the Haitian people and the African people. We all one. You know, we are the human race. So if one of us hurt, we all hurt. So let's try to help one another as much as we can. So I'll do that to what I do to my lens 
or to my speak or just anything we can do. Uh, we need to help one another. The world is not that big uh, because of technology is really small. So I have one person say, what do you think you could change the world with your little camera and your lenses? I said, it'll take one. Gandhi, Jesus, I mean, it'll take one. Yeah, I'm not comparing one. myself, but it'll take one to start the movement. To make a difference. To make a difference. Yeah, thank you, know? you Mark. Oh, thank it's you. my pleasure. Thank you for having much. me. Thank you so much for joining us <laughs> here. Thank you, thank you, So <laughs> thank you. Have me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. I hope everything went well, and uh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah. It's time now for a short break on The Morning Show. When we return, Arise News analyst Emmanuel Afeni will join us with a review of the top stories on today's newspapers. Stay with us.